Good evening and welcome to our prayer meeting at Beckles Baptist Church. Uh, tuning in uh, online at, on YouTube as we've done for the past few weeks. Obviously, we can't meet in person, um, but at least we get the privilege of praying together around the town and around the area together. Uh, my name is Peter Skerritt, the assistant pastor at Beckles Baptist Church, and I'm going to be uh, opening up God's word to us before sending you away to pray in response to that. Um, in the past few weeks, we've been considering the Lord's Prayer, working um, through the prayers of Jesus as he starts our Father in heaven and then gives us petition after petition, things to pray for. Uh, and we've been saying that actually uh, one of the benefits of the Lord's Prayer is that it, it gives puff uh, to our prayer life. So we start off with a standard balloon and the idea is that uh, the, the things that we pray for, what we're interested in, what we're concerned for, what we ask for, uh, well, in time... Uh, with pressures in life and uh, difficulties in our own circumstances or around us in the world, our prayer life can get kind of shrunk, uh, self-centered, self-absorbed, and, and the orbit of what we pray for becomes smaller and smaller, something akin to a balloon, a little bit like this, a little bit shriveled. Um, the sphere has really shrunk. Well, our aim, and what I hope you have found, actually, as we've been going through the Lord's Prayer, is that we actually have put some puff into our prayer life. As Jesus teaches us how to pray, actually, this is what we've been thinking about as we consider each different concern from the Lord Jesus. Uh, what we've prayed for has expanded more and more. And we come to the last petition today, and uh, we are going to turn to that in Matthew chapter 6. So if you haven't got a Bible with you, please do uh, hit pause, go and get one, and then we'll turn through it together. So we're in Matthew chapter 6. Uh, let me pray before we come to hear the Lord Jesus speak to us. Our Father in heaven, we uh, thank you for these words. We thank you that we can address you as our Father in heaven with the Lord Jesus as our brother and our teacher and our master. We thank you for how he has uh, shaped and instructed our prayers uh, thus far. We pray uh, that we'd not forget these lessons from the past few weeks. Please open our hearts, open our minds, change our prayers uh, from what we hear today, and please drive us to our knees as we uh, listen to the Lord's Prayer. Amen. Well, in the past uh, few days, I've been reading through Pilgrim's Progress with my daughter, Caitlin. It's a slightly abridged children's version. Um, if you don't know the story, Pilgrim's Progress is John Bunyan's classic allegory of the Christian life following a man, Christian, uh, who, having read a book, uh, realises that the city he's been living in is destined for destruction. And so he sets out on a path heading towards the celestial city, uh, the city of heaven. That's uh, an allegory, a picture of the, the Christian life. And a couple of nights ago, Caitlin turned to me and asked a very telling question. She just said simply, Daddy, uh, why do so many bad things happen to Christian on the way. She didn't, she'd noticed that pretty much page after page, something hard, something difficult, something dangerous came across a Christian, and um, he, he was struggling every page of the life. And really, that question is quite telling for us, I think. It will highlight the problem for us, and that we forget that we're in a battle. We forget we're in a battle. And that's evident, I think, in our prayer life. That when was the last time we prayed for things concerning this? Uh, none of us, of course, is obl are, are oblivious to the, the dangers and difficulties that people in general face in our world. There are difficulties aplenty for everybody. But sometimes as Christians, I think we, we forget the specific dangers that Christians face in particular in this world. As one American pastor uh, once said, he said, entering the kingdom is like enlisting in the Navy, but often the kingdom's likened to a Caribbean cruise on a luxury liner. I mean, who would turn that offer down? People change into their le leisure clothes, they grab the suntan lotion and saunter off down to the docks, and, well, their surprise is, this isn't what I signed up for. There's this big gray ship, warship, with writing on the side. Then they see the cannons and the helicopters and the guns, and they realize, ah, oh, this isn't quite what I thought it was, because entering the kingdom's like enlisting in the Navy, on a warship, uh, not so much a cruise liner. We forget that we're in a battle, but actually that, that is what Jesus wants to do in this last petition in the Lord's Prayer, is to remind us that we are in a battle and to cause us to pray. 
Now, before, before we go on, we do need to say that, that the war has been won. And that's been proven. In fact, that Jesus has ascended on high. Everything is under his feet. Everything is under his control. He has won this battle. But the skirmishes continue. Kind of dogfights carry on. And we're stuck in the middle of that as Christians. And so Jesus wants us to pray like that. And so whilst you might not have thought of it like this before, I've found myself thinking in some senses the Lord's Prayer is a little bit like a rallying call or or a battle cry even. I wonder if you've read it like that before. Let's read it together. Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through to 13. And see how Jesus calls us and equips us to this battle. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. That's the petition, the request that we're considering today. You see, as we, as we pray, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. Uh, we are not just putting, as we saw earlier, put, putting puff in our prayer lives, um, but we're also taking sides, declaring allegiances, declaring interests, and asking for help along the way. And we've got one final request today. And just like a coin has two sides, we've got one petition for protection with two sides to it. And the first side is simply this. Firstly, we're praying, protect us from ourselves. Protect us from ourselves. That's what Jesus says. And he says, lead us not into temptation. Protect us from ourselves. That's clear enough, actually, if you were to pick up Pilgrim's Progress and read through it. You'll see that a Christian uh, is faced with plenty of distractions and dangers and difficulties along the way. But what is the real danger that he's faced with at each, at each turn and twist. The danger actually lies within himself. For Christian on his journey to the celestial city, each outward trial and test leaves him open to inward temptation. So he might meet worldly wise man who tells him to go somewhere else and, and lift off the burden of sin from his back somewhere else, but not the celestial city. That's a danger. But the real danger is that Christian listens to him. Christian might meet timorous or fearful, who tells him of the frightening lions that lie ahead and says, you've got to turn back. And that's a difficulty. But the real danger is that Christian listens and does turn back. Again, Demas comes along and offers uh, Christian a bucket load of silver. If only he'll turn off the path. And that's a distraction. But the real danger would be for Christian to take up his offer and leave the path and go after the money. You see, every external trial or test or difficulty leaves Christian open to internal inward temptation. And it's not just Christian, is it? It's true for us too. I'm sure you felt that. Every uh, moment of loneliness it leaves us open to lust in our, in our heads or on our screens or to pursue a particular inappropriate relationship that we know is inappropriate because we'd rather not tell people about it. Every uh, financial difficulty that we find ourselves facing, it might leave us fearful or might leave us open to stinginess and meanness and, and clinging on to what we do have. Again, uh, prosperity and wealth. Having the money leaves us open to or well, being stingy, we might want to hold on to it, or being frivolous and just spending it on whatever we like without thinking of others. All sorts of dangers. What about failure? Failure and mistakes, they leave us open to self-pity and wallowing. I'm prone to that. Uh, what about tiredness and fatigue? Maybe you felt that in the past few days. It leaves us open to frustration and uh, irritability. Opposition and criticism, when you have a bit of conflict, that's an external trial or test, and it leaves us open to resentment and hostility and grudges and division. In every case, these external trials are, are leaving us open to temptation. And so it's no wonder that Jesus calls us to pray, Lord, protect us 
from ourselves. Lead us not into temptation. Protect us from ourselves. He doesn't say, spare me from the trial. It's not, not wrong to say, help me, please don't lead me down that way. But whilst we don't pray necessarily, spare me from it, we say, Lord, sustain me through it. Keep me on the straight and narrow. Keep me trusting. Keep me listening. Keep me loving. Protect me from myself. Because I know every external thing I face is, is a moment for temptation from within. Keep me going. It's worth just saying, actually, and whilst we pray for those things, we'll also want to be doing things ourselves. We don't just say, Lord, protect me from lust, and then go and flick the, the computer on at a ridiculous clock when no one else is awake. Uh, we don't say, Lord, protect me from irritability, and then stay up all night binge-watching box sets. Uh, we pray for things, and then we, we pursue them too. But Jesus says, you need to pray. Protect us from ourselves. That's one side of the coin, uh, this petition for protection. Uh, on the other side of the coin is this, protect us from the devil. Protect us from the devil. Jesus says in verse 13, deliver us from the evil one. Now, this is something that Christians in the past uh, knew all too well. But I think it's slightly interesting uh, that actually that sounds slightly nuts to many people, let alone Christians in our day and age. Uh, this is a book um, written by a Puritan, uh, which I have on my shelf, Precious Remedies Against Satan's Devices. Now, can you imagine someone sitting on the train nowadays and, and just opening that up and reading it? it? It just seems slightly crazy, obviously, to the world, but even to Christians to think that Satan is on the rampage. But Jesus says, protect us from the devil. We're in a battle. So it's not crazy to pray, pray that at all. We need to say, who's opposing us? Jesus has been quite clear. Deliver us from the evil one here. Uh, here, he's, the devil is called the evil one. Elsewhere, let me just read some of the titles that are given to him in Scripture to see who is opposing us. Uh, Beelzebub, he's the lord of the flies. Belial, the worthless one. The devil's described as a deceitful serpent, a raging dragon, a roaring lion. He's the enemy of God, the, the father of lies, a murderer from the beginning. He's the prince of this world, the prince of the power of this age, the god of this world. Is Satan, which means an accuser or an adversary or an opponent. He's, he's dead set against you. And whilst he's on a leash, his destiny is set. Jesus has crushed and won the victory while well, we're waiting for that final devastation. And until that point, Satan will continue to rage. And so Jesus says, pray this, deliver us from the evil one. How is he opposing us? I think we just need to see that there's maybe a parallel in the development of, of modern warfare. So if I say spiritual warfare, we think warfare, I'm thinking uh, air raid sirens and bombs and aeroplanes and tanks and all the explosive big visuals. Um, but what if we were to think more of um, cyber warfare? Kind of a more modern development. But it's persistent, it's daily, it's often undetected calculated and just as effective at uh, disrupting, devastating and destroying the enemy. Not as obvious, but just as deadly. Now we should think spiritual cyber warfare. No wonder we need to pray, Father, protect us from the, the devil, deliver us from the evil one. Now this book, Precious Remedies Against Satan's Devices, has been seen as um, actually are presenting four main ways that, that Satan opposes people and goes at God's people, enticing us to sin, keeping us from worship and spiritual discipline, stirring up doubt, and ensnaring people in particular circumstances. And we've considered one of those enticing us to sin. But what if we were to consider just one more of them to see how we really desperately need to pray? Have you ever thought of doubt as a device of the devil? For those of us who are, who are constantly plagued by scepticism, you ever wonder whether actually Satan is using that as a, a device, a weapon against you, an effective weapon? You know, you, you sit in a sermon and you're desperately um, trying to fight the temptation to dismiss the preacher altogether. You, you don't quite trust him and, 
it, even if you do, uh, objections are constantly kind of coming up in your mind thinking, yeah, but what about this? Well, sure, I can understand you're saying this, but why does no one else in the world see that? Uh, and, and there's this sceptical surge that, that comes in us. And questions are no bad thing. But a persistent doubting scepticism that says that actually is really disbelief is in a very effective weapon of the devil to take out God's people as they hear, but they doubt. That's one element of doubt. But what about other people in the church? Maybe some of you aren't so much plagued by scepticism, but real just lack of confidence before God, lack of assurance. You think that does God really love me? You've no doubt that the truths of the gospel are true. When you hear the preacher speak uh, that God so loved the world, you think, yeah, but not me. When you hear a preacher say, God forgives sin, yeah, but not that sin, surely. And again, I was just aware, this is one of the ways that the devil is using doubt to undermine and attack us. And that's just one way in which he's at work. And it shows us why Jesus says, pray, protect us from the devil. Deliver us from the evil one. We desperately need to pray this for ourselves, for our church family. Think about, we, we pray for people who are sick. We pay, pray for people who are struggling with particular circumstances. And we ought to be praying that in those circumstances, in those struggles, in those sickness uh, and the times of illness, that they are protected from themselves, protected from the evil one. And we ought to be praying for our mission partners, not just that they are fruitful, but that they are sustained and carried through every trial, protected from themselves, protected from the evil one. The preacher I mentioned earlier concluded like this, in our war with Satan, there are no demilitarized zones. There is never a lull in the fighting. All we should know in this world is war. Which is why Jesus concludes, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Now before I hand over to Tom um, to just unpack for us a bit more about what's going to be happening in the following weeks, uh, we're going to close together by reading some words from the Heidelberg Catechism. Uh, now, if you're not sure what that was, it's a, an old-fashioned word for a teaching tool, a kind of way of teaching Christians uh, what they believe. And it takes the form of question-answer. So they ask a question, and then you memorize the answer. Um, I'm going to read the question, and then please join with me in reading the answer. It will come up on the screen. They've been working through the Lord's Prayer. Question. What is the sixth petition? Answer. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. That is, in ourselves we are so weak that we cannot stand even for a moment. Moreover, our sworn enemies, the devil, the world, and our own flesh, do not cease to attack us. Will you therefore uphold and strengthen us by the power of your Holy Spirit, so that in this spiritual war, we may not go down to defeat, but always firmly resist our enemies until we finally obtain the complete victory. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for uh, these words that we've had from the Lord Jesus, how he has uh, shaped and challenged and uh, expanded our prayers. We pray that um, we would be sustained in the, in the following weeks, that we would pray these things desperately longing for your glory. Please reorientate our priorities, that we would want your kingdom to come in all things that happen. We pray uh, that we'd continue to depend, to depend on you in all our needs for uh, the pardon for sin, the provision of our specific daily material needs, and as we've heard today, for protection. Help us not to be naive. Help us to um, not forget the fight that we find ourselves in. And help us not to forget our victorious Lord. Thank you that Jesus has ascended on high, proving the battle has been won and um, consummation, victory, uh, the, the end of all things uh, is only, um, we're just waiting for him to come back. There's nothing else to be done. So we thank you for the confidence we have in him, risen on high. Amen. I'm going to hand over to Tom now.
Well, my thanks to Peter for taking us through that uh, last bit of the Lord's Prayer. It has been good, has it not, to hear the Lord Jesus instruct us on the things that we should be prioritising as we pray, and pray that this evening you might continue to seek the Lord's protection for you, from yourself and from Satan in how we pray. I wanted to take the moment now just to explain to you what we are going to be doing in the weeks ahead for our midweek meetings while we as a church continue to live in lockdown as we are at the moment. We continue to be unable to meet together in small groups or in large and so what our plan is is to take a break from the style of prayer meeting that we've been having so far. That isn't in any way to suggest that we're going to have a break from praying. Instead, each week we're going to continue to produce a prayer sheet to help all of us think how we can be praying for our church, uh, for ourselves, uh, for our world too. But instead, what we are going to be doing is running home groups uh, remotely via Zoom or Skype. The intention is to do a series of Bible studies that will take us over six weeks looking at some fundamental truths of the Christian faith. Uh, each Bible study will be just a two or three verses at most, and the intention is that those Bible studies would make up maybe an hour's time altogether, but the Bible study just constitute about 20 minutes to that, realising it's harder to concentrate when we're talking to a screen rather than talking to people face to face. The course that we'll, of Bible studies that we're going to do will run for six weeks, but it's likely that we'll take stock after a couple of those weeks to see if it's working and serving our groups well. Your home group leaders will be in touch in the days ahead to set up plans and I will be emailing out to everybody the studies which will include the Bible passages printed and the questions that go along with them. So everyone will be tooled up from the get-go. If you're watching this and you're not part of one of our home groups, one of our small group Bible studies here at the church, and you'd like to be, can I simply encourage you to respond to the email that I send out each week or get in touch with us via our website. And if we can include you, we gladly will, and we'll do our best to do that. Um, and it's our prayer that um, in doing something different, that God would continue to bless and encourage us as we seek to share life together and spur one another on as we live for the Lord Jesus in these present times. Pray you know God's blessing as you turn to pray now. Um, may you know his help as you seek him by his spirit and through his son, calling him our Father in heaven.